Welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Schroeder's An Introduction to Thermal Physics. And this is section 2.2 where we go over the Einstein model of a solid. So uh, in the last section, we talked about the two-state paramagnet. We compared that with flipping coins. We have some basic probability calculations we can do to count the number of states and microstates. And in this section, we're going to look at a more physical, more common uh, type of system, which is a solid. To understand the solid, we need to keep in mind that it's basically a matrix of, well, atoms that are all arranged in some shape, right? It's a three-dimensional shape here. I'll try to draw like... So they're, they're basically connected to each other uh, vertically, horizontally, uh, in all three dimensions, right? And, and different solids take on different shapes, right? The, the trick is that each, each atom, each part of this solid has to uh, be in a particular position to have the minimum energy. And they all act like a, an oscillator, a quantum oscillator. In quantum mechanics, when we have a harmonic oscillator, or harmonic, harmonic oscillator, I shouldn't say harmonic. In the harmonic oscillator at the quantum level, the particles can only hold certain energy levels, which are separated by a distinct unit leap of energy. The size of the energy unit for each leap is hf, where h is Planck's constant, and f is the frequency, the natural frequency of the oscillator. It's not terribly important what the values of these things are. What's important is knowing that in the harmonic oscillator, so let's we have like a parabola shape here. There is a step ladder of energy and each step is separated by a unit. Okay. Now there, the minimum energy is not the very bottom, but it's, it's, I think it's one half. So we'll just set our zero to be this. So this will be one, two, three, four, and so on. Energy units that can be stored in the quantum oscillator. Albert Einstein proposed this model of a solid in 1907, and it's called an Einstein solid. And so an Einstein solid has n degrees of independence, n oscillators, which means there's n over three atoms or molecules in this three-dimensional solid because each atom can, can oscillate in three different directions, x, y, and z. Let's suppose we're looking at a single atom in an Einstein solid. We're going to see what kind of energy levels this atom might have. And so there's three directions that it might oscillate. So there's three independent oscillators. And one possible arrangement is each of these have the zero level, which is the one half h f. Okay. And so the total energy, we'll put total over here, is zero. Okay. Then there's the possibilities where each one of these oscillations has only one energy unit. And so this one all has a total of one. And then for a total energy of two, there's quite a few different possibilities. So we can have a two, zero, 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 two, zero, 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 two. And then we can have one, one, zero, one, zero, one, and then zero, one, one. And so there's a total energy here. Each of these have a total energy of two, right? And we can go on and do the ones for three. So we have three independent oscillators. And so we can have three, zero, 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 three, zero, 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 three. So this is three possible ways that energy can be allocated. And then we have two, one, zero, two, zero, one, one, two, zero, one, zero, two is next. How does he count? Zero, two, one. And then he counts one, zero, two, and zero, one, two. And then finally we have one, one, one as a possible. And this will all, these will all have a total energy of three, right? So that's the different ways that we can allocate energy with a single molecule oscillating in three possible directions, okay? So we can count the microstates. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 different ways to arrange energy such that the total energy is equal to or less than three. For this microstate, there's only one, for this macrostate of zero total energy, there's only one combination. For three energy, there's three combinations. 
This one has six, and this one has three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Has ten possibilities. So we'll we'll use uh, omega again, and so we'll say omega with zero total energy has only one configuration. Omega with one total energy has three configurations, three microstates. Omega with two units of energy has six. And then finally, omega of three has 10, right? So we're just counting the number of microstates for each of these macrostates, okay? Omega of n comma q, where n is the number of oscillators and Q is the total energy is equal to Q plus N minus one and Q, which if we were to work this out, we would get the formula, which is equal. I'm just gonna kind of write this over here where we have some room. This is equal to Q plus N minus one factorial divided by Q factorial divided by or times N minus one factorial. Okay, this would be Q plus N minus one minus Q, so it's just N minus one. And so that is how you can count the total number of microstates for N oscillators uh, with the energy level of Q. So let's write down the formula that we had for omega. So omega with N oscillators having a total energy of Q is Q plus N minus one Q, okay? So how do we get this? How can we prove this? Well, his proof is pretty simple. So he says, suppose that we were to represent a microstate this way. So he has a circle followed by a slash with three circles, then two slashes, and then four circles. And these circles represent an energy unit. And the slash separates oscillators. Okay. So in this particular case, we have Q is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Q is eight and N is uh, one, two, three, four, there's N four, okay? Which means you have Q plus N minus one symbols, right? So you need a symbol for each dot and you need N minus one slashes. So if there's four oscillators, you need three separators, right? So that means there are Q plus N minus one ways to arrange the dots and slashes. So this would include, you know, everything a slash. It would include everything a dot, right? And so what we need to do is choose only the ones that have a certain number of symbols. And so there are Q, we need Q dots total. So that means this is going to give us the formula where we take Q plus N minus one, and then we only want Q of them to be chosen, okay? So the ones that have Q dots to be chosen, okay? So that's a fairly hand wavy uh, proof. If you want to do a more thorough proof and count for yourself, this is a good opportunity to exercise your newfound ability to count things. At this point, I'm gonna go into the problems. So problem 2.5 is fairly straightforward. Um, you can, basically write on a piece of paper and count the states yourself, right? Um, if anything, you're probably gonna uh, find it hard to enumerate all the possible states. So um, what I recommend doing is just like we got, kind of did here. So we kind of arrange these into blocks. Like here we have the blocks where we have two, two and one. This is the one where only one has three. And then this is the one where we have, they all have one, right? And so we just count the number of ways to arrange those symbols, okay? And if, if you go back to the previous section and probability and how you count things using factorials, it should all make a lot of sense, okay? Anyway, uh, problem two six, calculate the multiplicity of an Einstein solid with 30 oscillators and 30 units of, of energy, okay? So basically, what is the value of this, okay? And I'm gonna give you a heads up, it's gonna be a large number. 3 plus 30 minus 1 over 30. So you're going to get, you know, what is that? 59 factorial divided by 30 factorial divided by 29 factorial. Okay, so you're going to need a calculator to solve that. Um, if you want to sit down and multiply those numbers out in your head, you're a very special person. 
Okay, uh, maybe you'll do it on a piece of paper, several pieces of paper if you want to calculate that. Okay, 2.7. For an Einstein solid with four oscillators and two units of energy, represent each possible microstate is a series of dots and vertical lines as used in the text to prove section 2.9. So he wants you to use Q equals two and N equals four, and then come up with all the possible ways to arrange those symbols such that you have two dots and you have three lines. All right, and uh, there's a nice little quote at the end of the section talking about uh, how Richard Feynman was surprised to find a license plate with ARW357. The, the note there is that in the world of probability, coincidences are very likely. A particular coincidence is very unlikely. Okay, so in a given day, if you look at all the different random data that you're getting, you're gonna find something that's coincidental. And the trick, something that I like to think about is if you have a 99% certainty of your experiment being correct or your theory being correct or whatever, and you have 100 experiments or theories that you think are correct, how many of those are likely to be wrong, right? And that's one of the things we struggle with in physics is there's so many things that we know, but we don't necessarily have a high enough certainty that we know that it's correct that it's not just coincidence that we saw that result. So we're always going back and revisiting previous results. We're always open to um, seeing some new data that might contradict some of the previous results we've seen. Um, uh, interesting thing is after the Higgs boson was discovered, there was a blip seen in some of the data which represented, which might have represented a new interaction that we didn't think was possible. However, when they went back the next year and they did some more investigation, they saw the blip disappeared. It was just a statistical anomaly and that kind of thing does happen with actual data. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we'll continue with section 2.3 next. Have a great day, take care, and bye-bye.